Our first reading this morning is a reading from Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 to 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not being burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and with honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt. You shall worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great sufferings at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it Lord, this must never happen to you. But Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what 
has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. encounter God under shady oak trees, on riverbanks, at the top of mountains, in long stretches of highway, in the wilderness, by the bedside, cradling in their arms a newborn child or keeping vigil at a deathbed. God shows up in whirlwinds and starry skies and lovers' eyes and human tears in lightning and thunderbolts, burning bushes, perfect strangers, and on a wooden cross upon a hill. Well, this July, back in London, that other city nearby, in Harris Park on Victoria Day, I viewed spectacular fireworks, and I suspect that some of you enjoyed great fireworks in St. Thomas or nearby, do you remember, as a child, how exciting it all was? And of course, then there was that burning down of the miniature schoolhouse. And you know, I still wonder why I love school so much, but I sure love burning the, the, church, the school down. <laughs> the brilliant colors, sounds, and the patterns are really incredible and beautiful as they were. This year, I also took some time to look on the faces of the people watching. Some were silent with eyes wide. Others were doing that, oh, ah. Uh. Several were howling and clapping. A couple jumping and screaming. And some children and adults put their hands over their ears and a baby cried. No doubt the animals may have been terrified and perhaps a few fled. And of course there were announcements, please do not bring your pets to the fireworks. Animals know sights and sounds as warnings of danger. No doubt for humans, these celestial lights held spiritual light, perhaps giving pause to gratitude as well. Moses encountered God in a display of ethereal light and flame. He was both drawn to the celestial beauty of that burning bush and overwhelmed with a desire to flee being filled with holy fear that he was in the presence of something dangerous and good. When people want to know more about, Je about God, Jesus tells us to pay attention to what's in front of you, to the lilies of the fields, the birds of the air, to a woman in her kitchen kneading bread, to children playing, workers lining up for their pay, holy mountains and low valleys, sacred wells, bread and wine, and someone's smile. Moses paid attention to what was in front of him, a burning bush, and barefoot on holy ground, he encountered God. He was bathed in grace and love, even as his words, not worthy, tell us he was filled with fear that too much was happening here that he could take in or needed in his life. He was aware that he was known and called by name, 
aware that his presence was required in the midst of his people suffering at the hands of the increasing Egyptian hostility. When he declined God's invitation to get involved in a rather radical way, in a leadership role of leading them out of a civil volatile situation, he was told that he would be given what he needed to move himself and the Hebrew people through their crisis to a good future. He rose refreshed, having received a blessing for the journey ahead. You know, I wonder though if it took more than that one uh, revelation. I wondered if the next day he wondered if it was all a dream or a mistake. We do know he ultimately embraced his call and did indeed take off his shoes to acknowledge he was walking on holy ground. He was connected to the earth, to people, his people, and he was connected to the divine and the sacred. Moses had been born when a king was declaring, kill all the male Hebrew babies. But as we talked about last Sunday, many babies were saved by the courageous Hebrew midwives and the infant Moses was hidden by his resourceful mother and the midwives and his sister in bulrushes on the Nile River, adopted by one of King Pharaoh's own daughters and raised in a household of the ruling class to become a man with two heritages. At some level, his Hebrew identity endured and Moses' Hebrewness broke out into the open. Now what you don't hear is some important stuff happening to him between his birth and this, this revelation. And it's the same with Jesus. We sure would love to know what happened between his birth and, and uh, his public ministry. Hebrew construction workers were being whipped by their boss, pushing them beyond the limits of their capacity. Now Moses saw what was in front of him, but the difference is, unlike the burning bush, he was consumed by a fire and a rage inside him. It fueled him promptly, if not intentionally, to kill the said boss, forcing him to flee Egypt to leave behind the peoples he, he lived with. If we scroll forward a little bit, we will find that then Moses married a Midianite family, a woman from the Midianite family, and he was shepherding his father-in-law's sheep. And so on this day that we encounter him in the reading that John read to us, he led his flock, I quote, beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God, where the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, he looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Well, I think we all know about fires. I hope you haven't encountered a house fire, but I suspect some of you have. And that I think, I don't know if I shared with how my, my grandmother died. And we know right now, we've been very concerned in our prayers for the province of British Columbia, where it's been very hard to arrest those forest fires. And they leave scars on the landscape, just as um, the fires of rage in people or in nations leave scars on the inner landscape of people's emotions and psyches and soul. So we know what they do. We know that the earth and creatures and trees have experienced death. But fire is more than that. We know it because of what it can destroy. Yet God's fire creates. The fire of hate and fear burns, and that's why we sing the beautiful kinds of songs we do of praise that remind us of our calling, like Moses, to bring the, the, the quenching fresh water, the living water, to people who feel consumed by the fires of hate. We also know that simple things of life can also feel like they're consuming us, like a death or divorce or an illness, or a walk away from a painful relationship, car accident, an overwhelmingly tight budget. They're all fires. What's interesting that God makes a claim to Moses, and there's that burning bush, and yet it fills him up with life. It doesn't take the life away, but in C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters, a wonderful little book, um, and it's all about a devil training a junior devil. I'm going to tell you how you get these people. It's very enlightening. But what he says is, you know, remember, we both give affection to human beings. But what our aim is, is to consume them. And God's aim is to fill them with love. Now the story almost ends with Moses' name to 
this profound and sacred moment. He's take, but he says, who am I? In other words, why, God, are you even here? I disappeared from Egypt. I killed someone. My escape clause is only good if I'm out of sight and out of mind. Not me, God. But what does God say? I will be with you. So then there comes the back and forth. Who am I? Who are you? What if they don't believe me? What if they do? What if they ask me who you are? I am who I am. What if I can't find the right words? They're already inside you. Like Peter in the Gospel today from Matthew, Moses tries to throw up a shield he can hide behind. Do you remember how Jesus answered Peter? He was a bit harsh on him, but I think he was trying to jolt him when he says, get behind me, Satan. Then he says, you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. If you want to save your life, you must lose it for my sake. In other words, also, Peter and Moses, look what's in front of you. I'm in front of you. We take off our shoes, we feel the grass, we feel its texture, the sand, the marble floors, wherever you are now, if you've got your socks or your bare feet, you feel that groundedness, that you're connected, that as Native people draw pictures, you'll find out that they never, uh, there's there's no loss in the link. So if they draw a human being, somewhere the line touches something else and something else and the entire the entire large picture whether it be of all creation or whatever is always connected and so are we and I want to tell you about one person as I'm coming closer to the end of this Robin Williams people know Robin the great comedian he was such a loss and a sudden loss and what you might not know was it wasn't an easy road for him he suffered emotionally uh, highs and lows what you don't know because it wasn't that public is how generous he was and he didn't always have big money but even before he was known um, there's instances came out as people wrote their tributes and because he made a big impact on me even though I didn't know him personally I was just so inspired by him I read a lot of them at that time and uh, they would talk about how he went back to a public school and uh, uh, that was struggling and he gave them the best sound system they could ever have and supported the music uh, fund so that people had a chance in that area too to shine. Anyways, one woman's testimony I had kept and I looked it up and found it again and her name was Lindsay Rogers and uh, she had had a sudden rather um, life-altering car accident and was in hospital and you may not know Robin Williams would go around to the hospitals a lot and he would visit and she was so honored and he talked to her on a very real level saying Um, and she talked about her scars and he said that he couldn't believe her story and how blessed he was to have met her and she said this he sat down we talked and and he said don't ever be ashamed of your scars they are battle wounds and show how strong you are they turn into stars and you will shine so bright she never forgot that and another said uh, he said to another um, person who wrote in it's not how much you give or what you give Everyone wants to feel like someone still cares. So maybe Robin Williams had a heart aflame with that kind of fire that God wants us to have, but maybe it lost its source of air. And maybe that's the butterfly effect again today, this Sunday in our reading. Don't ever underestimate what your little act of kindness, that calling that is in you, whether it's that big calling or little calling, all the callings matter. And as you touch lives, if you are grounded to another human being, then maybe you bring something to that relationship that it needs in that moment. What's in front of you right now in your life? God is passionate about that. Some people say um, the church doesn't have a mission. And we go, ah. What they say is God's mission. God's mission has a church. We're just part of the wider picture of God's mission. The Christian walk doesn't start with projects and principles as important as they are. It starts with being present. I'm here. And then we hear God saying, I'm here too. So let's this week practice this kind of listening. Take off your shoes. I hope you have this summer. And feel the sand or the, or the grass or just in your house carpet or cool floors. Feel the earth beneath you. Be aware and present to how that feels. 
and say as Moses did. Let's do this prayer. You know when you're in a hurry and you just think, oh, how could, oh, I don't have time to pray? Maybe if we, every one of us said at least once each day, simply this, here I am. Nothing more. Here I am. And then listen. Our walk in life for God doesn't end with excuses or even our fears. He respects them. It journeys us into wilderness and, come, and we come out more alive than when we went in. So come. Are you ready to hear? Are you ready to see? Can you take the heat? Amen. Oh,